Welcome to our lecture online. So here we're going to show you how these equations were derived because otherwise you say how do I know that these identities are actually correct? We can plug in some numbers and they appear to be correct but how do we know they're correct? How do, how do we prove that the sine of a plus b is indeed sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b and the sine of a minus b is indeed sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b? How do we know that? Well, we're going to attempt to do that by showing you that on this particular sketch right here. Notice we have two triangles. We have this triangle right here with angle A, and we have this triangle right there with angle B. And notice both of them are indeed right triangles. We're going to say that the distance from O to P by definition is equal to 1. We can, that's the hypotenuse of this top triangle, and we can make it any distance. So to make it easy, let's set it equal to 1. All right, based upon that, now let's define angles in terms of, or the sine and the cosine in terms of the angle B. So we can say here that the sine of B is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So that would equal PQ, that's the opposite side, divided by the hypotenuse, which is OP. And of course, we define OP to be equal to 1, so it's equal to PQ. So the definition, by definition, the sine is equal to the length, uh, the sine of B is equal to the length of P to Q. How about the cosine of B? Well, by definition, that's going to be equal to the adjacent side from O to, from o to Q divided by the hypotenuse from O to P. Of course, O to P is equal to 1, so this is equal to O from O to Q. So this length right here from O to Q, by definition, is the cosine of B, since we defined the hypotenuse from O to P to be equal to 1. So now we need to define sine and cosine in terms of the angle A. And to help us with that, we're going to use this little triangle up here. Now notice that this line right here is perpendicular to this line, and this line right here is perpendicular to this line. So if these two lines are perpendicular to these two lines, then the angle between those two lines must equal the angle of these two lines. So therefore, that angle must equal A as well. And we're going to use that little triangle in just a moment. So what we can do now is we can define the sine of A as being equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So the opposite side would be QT, and the adjacent side would be from O to T. QT, oh, wait a minute, that's not correct. It'll be opposite side over the hypotenuse. I was not thinking right here. So opposite side is QT, hypotenuse is O to Q. That's better, O to Q. There we go, that's what we want. And then the cosine of A is equal to, and now we're going to use that little triangle up here, the cosine of the angle A, that's this angle right here, is going to be equal to the adjacent side, which is from P to R, divided by the hypotenuse, which is from P to Q. So adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, PR divided by PQ. Now, now what we should realize here is that notice that OQ is defined as being the cosine of B which is what we have over here so this quantity right here is already defined and if we look at this right here we can see that PQ is defined as well which means we can solve this for QT and solve this for PR and that's what we're going to do next so next we're going to write that QT is equal to the sine of A multiply times OQ, which is equal to the sine of A, multiply times OQ, and OQ is equal to the cosine of B. And likewise, we can solve this for PR, which is equal to the cosine of A times PQ. And PQ is defined as the sine of B, so this is equal to the cosine of A times the sine of B. All right, now what we need to do next is we need to now define the sine of A plus B. So 
So now we come over here and we say, well, the sine of a plus b, that's, that's relative to this triangle right here, which is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So that is equal to the opposite side, which is from p to s, divided by the hypotenuse, which is from o to p. Now remember, going from o to p, that's equal to 1, so this is simply p to s. But notice that p to s is really the sum of p to r plus q to t. So that's equal to from p to r plus from q to t. And p to r is defined over here, and q to t is defined over here. Now we're going to reverse the order. We're going to write this as q to t plus p to r because we want to get the results looking exactly what we have over here. So then when we plug all that in, we can say that the sine of a plus b therefore is equal to q to t, which is defined over here, which is the sine of a times the cosine of b, plus p to r, which is defined over here, which is the cosine of a sine of b. And notice that gives us exactly what we have up here. Now to get the second identity, we're going to replace plus b by a negative b. So let's do that. So we have the sine of a minus b, so that means we're going to take every b and replace it by minus b. So we, instead of having a plus b, now we have a minus b. That is equal to the sine of a times the cosine of negative b. And that is plus the cosine of a times the sine of negative b. I don't need these parentheses here, but we do need it here. So times the sine of negative b. Now we need two more identities. We need that the cosine of the negative angle is equal to the cosine of the angle. So it doesn't make any difference. The cosine of the angle is equal to the cosine of the negative angle. But for the sine, the sine of the negative angle is equal to negative the sine of the angle. So using that, those two identities coming over here, we can now say that the sine of a minus b is equal to the sine of a times the cosine, oop, I forgot my a here, got a little too quick. So we have the sine of a times the cosine of positive b, because that's the same, the cosine of a negative angle is the same as cos cosine of the positive angle, plus the cosine of a times the sine of negative b, which is times the negative sine of the positive b. And then bring this negative sign over here. We can then say that the sine of a minus b is equal to the sine of a times the cosine of b minus the cosine of a times the sine of the positive b. And that looks exactly like we have over here. So there you go. That is how you find those two identities. We have now proven that they are correct. You can use them. And this is how that is done. You don't see how you get this angle here? Yeah. Okay. So whenever you have a line here, which is perpendicular to this line, yeah. and then you have the line um, over here, which is perpendicular to this line. So we have two lines that are perpendicular to these two lines. This line is perpendicular to this one, and this line is perpendicular to this one. That means that the angle between those two lines must equal to the angle between those two lines. So that's how that's done. Okay? <laughs> Funky. <laughs> All right. This is not your typical geometry. Um, it's one of the rules in geometry. If you have two lines that form an angle, and they have two perpendicular lines to those two lines, then the angle must be equal. I think we've covered that in our geometry videos. <laughs> okay.